Oh, that's going to put me on the spot there. I <laughs> look, they have it. Look, they have a chance. Here we go. Back with Kurt Ho. Good to see you again. Kurt is a great follow on Twitter at C-Y-R-T-H-O-G-G. And also, of course, the Brewers Beat reporter for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. So, Kurt, good to see you. And, of course, we got to start with Jackson Churio coming off the 2020 season. We were like, we got to call Kurt and get his thoughts on what he's seeing because I don't feel like he's getting the crazy attention that he got last year when he was the number one prospect in the sport. Part of that is this rookie class in the National League. It's really, really, really good and really, really tight and competitive as well. Jackson Merrill's been awesome. Paul Skeens, do we have to say anything more? Shota Imanaga, like all these other guys too. But you know what? Yeah, being the youngest guy to ever go 2020, uh, doing it with, what, two weeks left in the season and with the way he started the year, pretty impressive. I, I'm, I am as impressed, maybe it's because I get to watch him up close every day, but as impressed with what Churio's doing as – any of these remarkable rookies are. He's getting better as the season goes on. His numbers are getting, I mean, you just, they're just, so he's getting better. If this was the MVP race, he would be pulling away with the MVP race. If it was the same people because, oh, well, you're, you're doing it down the stretch. You're, you're pushing your team into the playoffs. His success coincided with this team's MVP, Christian Yelich, going out. He started to get hot just a little bit before this. Does that give him enough of a push over Jackson Merrill, who I think is the front runner right now? Yeah, I think Merrill and Churio are probably actually pretty similar in that regard. Merrill's cooled off a little bit of late, but he did. Merrill won Rookie of the Month in August, and that's with Churio posting like a nine something OPS. Churio leads the National League in batting since June 2nd or so. Um, and when you look at the way this roster is shaped up, Willie Adamas has been great, William Contreras has been great. But outside of those guys, with Christian Yelich going down, they absolutely needed someone to step up. And Churio has carried a significant load for this team. And um, his defense has been improved as well. It's It's been super impressive to watch. And, yeah, the way he is effectively carrying the load for a team that's running away with the division that no one expected to run away with the division, that should probably carry some weight too. He's playing meaningful games and taking a, a torch to the league while doing it. So then how does that relate to how we should size up the Milwaukee Brewers for the postseason? Where do you think this team is at? Are they equipped to win a World Series? Like that That's the goal here. This team has had a lot of success, a lot of regular season success for a good chunk of time now. You know, Do you think that they can get to a World Series and win a World Series with the current team? Don't, don't look at 2025, 2026. Oh, we got nice young players. What about right now? That's exactly what it needs to be in Milwaukee. And uh, this is a different team than it's been the past few years when it was Woodruff and Burns and Peralta. And you know what? Those teams underperformed. They've won one playoff game since coming within a game of the World Series in 2018. Uh, that's pretty low given the standards of what they've accomplished in the regular season. So, yeah, this thing is all about what you do now um, in the playoffs. Winning 95 games is great. And it's no doubt an indicator that this is one of the best run and most consistent franchises of baseball and doing it in Milwaukee is no small deal either. But at some point winning in the playoffs is what matters. Um, and I think we are now at that point. We were at that point last year uh, when they got eliminated in two games in a matter of seconds by the Diamondbacks. So yeah, that, that's what is going to matter for this team. It looks entirely different. Like they're going to have to piece it together with the pitching a little more. Uh, it's not a bunch of aces. They've got Freddie Peralta still, but, it's going to have to be a lot of combinations for 27 outs, but that's also sort of their strength. So um, they certainly don't stack up as the most talented team in the National League, and they'll be having to play at their best no matter what come the playoffs. So you kind of lead into my question here. You talk about uh, Freddie Peralta and you talk about the Diamondbacks as well. Well, lo and behold, they're playing in Arizona this week, uh, this weekend. Uh, do you think this is kind of a playoff implication of uh, what's to come? It's a good test against a really, really, really good offense. And there's some some guys pitching in this series where like this start is a good indicator of where they stack up against a lineup like this. Tobias Myers has a chance to be a game two or game three starter, assuming this team makes a wild card round. Well, guess what? He's pitching against the Diamondbacks. That's one of the bigger tests for him in his remarkable rookie year as well. Um, th this playoff roster is still, there's a lot of spots 
open up in the air. Um, guys are going to have to take them both on the pitching side and on the offense side. But uh, a lot of question marks as to who's going to get what role in the postseason. That's what kind of these last three weeks are about. And no doubt, starting uh, starting these three games in Arizona here, where it's going to be 105 degrees, that is kind of not, not the beginning because they've had some tough tests the last couple of weeks, but the beginning of a really difficult stretch uh, to finish up the regular season, even though they're going to have this division wrapped up. Are we talking about Tobias Myers enough? Is, no. Is, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think you wrote something about it, if I'm not incorrect, about three weeks ago. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's been Tobias Myers stuff coming throughout the year. Uh, Ken Rosenthal, I mean, he got some national attention a couple weeks ago. He had a story in The Athletic that was um, pretty good. I think, like, around Milwaukee, people are well aware of the Tobias Myers story. But to go from a guy – two years ago, this guy was – DFA to release three times, lost, I think, 15 or 16 games in AAA, started last year at AA. Now, look, he's one of your three most trusted arms and is absolutely going to get playoff starts seemingly at this rate. Uh, that's a pretty big deal and also kind of just indicative of how this team is doing it once again. Sure, they've got some superstars. Let's not, like, gloss over that fact, kind of like how, you know, how Moneyball sort of glosses over that they had all these really good players. The Brewers have really good players. Contreras, Adamas, Churios in that group, Devin Williams. Like, they have superstars. But they also get to where they are because they turn Tobias Myers into a guy with a sub-3 ERA, and he's going to make 25 starts this year. It's sort of their calling card. All right, this one's for the dudes. You know how scary it can get when you're going for a close shave below the belt, and that's why FT trusts Manscaped for those sensitive areas. Their newest package is the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, including the star of the show, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 5.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Want more wet products? Say no more. Manscaped has a new buff bundle. This bundle includes their signature silicone scrubber plus body watch, so ditch your nasty loofah and grab a taste of freshness. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Get 20% off plus free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use code F O. U L 20. Maybe I missed it, but you really didn't answer Scott's question. Is this team built to win the world series? Oh, that's going to put me on the spot there. I <laughs> look, they have it. Look, they have a chance, um, but they're going to need a lot of things to break, right? More than other teams. You stack them up against like the Phillies or a healthy Dodgers team. And on paper, they really don't stand much of a chance. Um, the lineup just, it's deep, but it's not deep in terms of like really, really impactful hitters. So they're going to need everything to break right on the pitching side. Guys like D.L. Hall, Aaron Ashby going to have to be at their best. Of course, every team in October has a chance. Uh, I just don't think a lot of people are going to be picking the Brewers. But then again, who picked them to win the division? And that's kind of where they play their best baseball under Pat Murphy. Is there a trend that is changing? Because today they're facing Eduardo Rodriguez. They have struggled against lefties. Is there a trend where you could see them getting in as the three seed? They got to play in the first round. And that team that they're facing just throws out two lefties and they bounce out early. Are they changing this narrative that they can't hit lefties? Hasn't been changed yet, Kratz. <laughs> um, Blake Snell, I mean, it is Blake Snell, let's be fair, wow. but he he shoved against them this week. Uh, the off, I think they're 18 and 22 in games started by left-handers on the opposing side this year, which for a team that's, what, 22 games over 500, that's pretty bad, and they've struggled against lefties for a while. And guess who they might line up against in the first round? The Mets. <laughs> well, they got some lefties. The Braves. They got some lefties, the Diamondbacks. Oh, yeah, they're facing one of those guys tonight. So, uh, yeah, if we're talking questions about this team, they haven't hit lefties for years, um, and no one really knows what to make of it. Like, they have guys in the lineup that can hit lefties. They just don't do it. Wow. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that game coming up, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brewers Diamondbacks for tonight. So, Kurt, awesome to catch up with you. Uh, appreciate the time. I know you were hustling through a pretty early flight today, too, right? What time was your flight today? 
Uh, we were boarding at 5.20 in Milwaukee. Ooh, which, gross. going to Arizona, you land at like 7. So, uh, a lot of downtime. Nap time. <laughs> nap time. Nap time. Yeah. Nap time. Are you a napper? Are you going to get napping? Uh, I'm going to get some lunch and then go to the ballpark and watch some ball. No nap today. Ever since no having nap. a Coffee. kid, I don't, I, don't, I don't nap. Coffee, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Ever since having a kid, you don't, you don't nap? What is that? Like, I, like, I, like, I can't. I cannot what? nap anymore. What, what does that it's mean? Bad. I like my body doesn't let me. I you're lay like down on, and you earn I don't know alert. how to describe it. It's bad. It's not good. That's that's not even good. on the road. No. All right, Kratz, so coffee. You have his info. You're gonna have to send him some. Yeah. Some tips. Yeah. Some sleeping. Some supplements. I'm good at two nap. things. One of them sleeping. Yeah. I don't nap. I just sleep. I'm good. Sleeper. Agreed. <laughs> yeah going to send you some tips so stay tuned but <laughs> kurt great to have you on dude uh enjoy the game yeah. tonight right all right thanks guys buddy be sure to like and subscribe for more content we're back here every weekday all year long so do not miss an episode the videos are coming in all day here's another video you might enjoy baseball the way it should be covered